So good news, folks. I have passed my exam, you know, and I'm thrilled. Now, I do know and I do appreciate that I said that I was going to do this. This um, Let me just move my screen so you can sh see who you're talking to. And, um, you know, I did say that I was actually going to do this in April. But when I booked my exam, there were no dates available in April nor March. And I thought, you know what, I really want to get this thing done. So after six weeks of training, you know, spending about four hours a day of reading the material, doing the materials and stuff like that, I decided I'll just bite the bullet. So on the 25th of January, I passed my exam, you know, and, and here's, here's the email that I received. I don't think there's anything sensitive in here that I, I need to hide. But anyway, basically what it is, is that, yeah, is at 500. Result is passed, 715. I think like the the threshold is 700. And uh, it is 700, really. And But, you know, in, in our line of work, a pass is a pass, right? So th these, these are the areas where they actually... Um, you know, challenge you. So manage identity access, basically like um, our back accounts, you know, um, understand a contributor, reader, um, what's the other one, owner, these kind of things. Um, implement platform protection, just basic, really simple. Just no key vault, just understand key vault and how that works, is there a security center? Um, what else can I say? It's not so simple, but you know, as you're studying, you pick up on these things. MSGs, VNets, all that sort of stuff. Managed security operations, I guess that's the Zero Security Center it's talking about, which I'm in love with, 87%, as it reflects my true commitment to, the, to that product. Sad. Security data and applications. Secure data application, again, is like, you know, NSG rules, VNets, that sort of thing. And, you know, those are the things that that I saw on the exam itself. So let's cut to the chase so that you can actually get up to speed. But I just wanna leave one thing is, is that look, when it comes to security, a lot of people have this thought that security is this big feel of knowledge or sometimes some people get intimidated about it. It's nothing like that. And I'll show you why. Because if I look at the material of which I've used, it says, you know, I just go back one. Is, is basically free, it, not free, it's beginner. Majority of everything is beginner. And you know, and the good thing about this, this doing the material this way is, is that you can actually see that when you study for this material to get your ASI 500, it's also part of the architecture syllabus. You know, So what I'm trying to say is, is that if you wanted to know or something to measure against where you're ready to take what exams, when you use this online free material that overlaps with other parts of the Azure security, I mean, the Azure syllabus for other products, this actually shows you when you are. So as you're ramping up, you do your AZ 900, 103 or 104, your AZ uh, 400, your 500, it's all part of things to then go, okay, AZ 303 could be your next um, challenge or 304. I can't remember. I've got the list of all the well, the is that so AZ-303 and AZ-304 here. And you can find this if you have a Wiz Labs account. So let's let us let us talk about Wiz Labs and how I've actually used that. Oops, I'm not showing you my spread button. If you want to know about spread button, give me a shout. But you know, that's not part of here today. Let's get so if I come here and if I go to my Wiz Labs. If I oh, log in, just type in AZ500. Now, it's really important that I must actually um, have a uh, disclaimer here. Is it that Wiz Labs is not a brain dump. Wiz Labs is not for you to go and recite all the um, questions for you to then use that to way to pass your exam because you will fail. The questions in Wiz Labs is not the same as what you get on the actual exam. The whole point of Wiz Labs is, is that it's practice test questions so that you can actually challenge yourself and see where you're weak in certain areas and strong in certain areas. If you're weak in certain areas, you could bring that level up, of course. And if you're strong in certain areas, you pat yourself on the back and, you know, basically 
uh, explore that expertise in more of a deeper way. So let's let's just I'll show you the free one. So if you were to sign up to Wiz Labs today, you're able to get the free um, option. And if I go just go to free, if I start the exam, and if I go in pra start quiz as practice mode, this practice mode basically means is that when you actually set the question, you want to see if you got the question right or wrong while you're doing the exam, not wait until the end to get a review. So just go start for here. Just while that's going, start. <laughs> So yeah, I'm really chuffed. You know, how was it? How was it? it? It wasn't easy. It took me an hour and a half out of two hours to be able to, to, you know, more or less do the questions and stuff like that. Um, I did it right here at home. I did it in my home office. And the way of booking the exams is quite simple, really. And, you know, basically, there was no interaction between me and the test proctor. They just want, you know, I did a video scan of the whole room underneath the chair that I was sitting on the left, right. I then had to show them my phone, throw it to the other side of the room. Well, I chose to throw it. It doesn't say throw it, but it says show the proctor when you actually move your 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 phone from the area where you are. What else? I needed to also have a identification with myself to just basically show, you know, I am who I say I am. Anyway, more about this. So I've given you enough time to just read this. Um, users will need to authenticate users' AD account and access the Cosmos DB account by using resource tokens. Which of the following would you implement for Cosmos DB? Which one do you think? A, B, or C, or D? A, B, C. Hit C. So create database, user generators. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there you go. You know, it's it's like that. Now, the good thing about Wiz Labs is, is that it shows you why this question or how to make this, the right choice in selecting this question, why they believe that um, they, that you know the option C is correct. And what will happen is is that you can then go to the Microsoft white paper itself and read. So where I actually was failing or laxing or not succeeding in anything, I came here and read the white paper, and this is what brought my knowledge up. The what else could I say really? But I'm chuffed to bits, man. You know, really passed. Really glad I got the cert underneath my belt. Um, it makes you feel or not. You know, it it reassures you that you know more than what you know. Is basically what I'm just trying to say. So if you're like me and you want to be able to just get this qualification, six weeks is what I did. And I was able to just, I went through each and every single one of these modules. I spent about two to three hours a day, probably up to four hours um, in lockdown doing this. And, you know, I'm a household of four kids, um, demand and wife. And, you know, I was able to pass this without a problem. Now, it's really good to actually use this module to be able to do something. The other place I recommend is um, to get, if you are not getting on with this free material, you know, Linux Academy or Cloud Guru is called now, or they've merged together. Um, basically, is a place for you to be able to get some sort of study materials. Out. They're really good. You know, I believe they do hands-on labs. My next probably exams that I do, I'll use them because I have an account with that. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, but here you get hands-on labs as, as well, you know, you implement network security in Azure. I'm not going to show you the labs. Basically, you can see, see the self yourself for free. But this gives you a really good overview of like, you know, protect from DDoS attacks. All this is free stuff, you know, all this is stuff that you should actually um, come here and do for free. How do I, how do I actually get to this point? Simple. I just simply use any search, if it'll let me freaking search. Um, a, I just type in AZF 500, Bing, I come here, Bing, Google, whatever. And yeah, I just come to this point where you book your exam. You know, you just come here and you just basically say, right, I want to learn either online or instructor led. It tells you where you can go. Um, 
in my opinion, because the market changes so much with this material, it's online free is good with me. Um, you know, and yeah, that's 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 it about it. I've got you see in this tab here, I've got my notes. So I will share this with you, not a problem. I'll put this in um, somewhere in the comments descriptions in this YouTube video or whatever video this ends up being on. But, you know, it, it talks about everything, open ID, AD multi-factor, you know, custom domains. But I saw on the exam was NSG rules. So it broke you down the simulator, not simulator, but, you know, it talked to you about, you know, here's VM1 and VM2, here's the NSGs associated with subnet. Would one virtual machine be able to communicate on the other on this port? It will ask you that. It asks you key vault questions. It asks you Azure Security Center questions. Hint, if anything that you're implementing with Azure Security Center and the license on the free is all you have to pay for it. <coughs> so, excuse me. That's that's the answer to that question. For the majority of questions I had, you know, is upgrade the license. Um, it was about just in time as well, understand the NSG and what port is associated with RDP on that through 389. Um, tokens, um, what else? That's about it, you know? But everything is covered here. Everything that you want to read and learn and understand is all here. Actually, I wouldn't even waste waste your time with these notes. These notes I took were from this. I just wanted, I use um, OneNote so that, you know, while I'm there with my phone and stuff, I'm walking the dog or I don't have a dog. What I'm talking about, if I'm going for a walk, if you have a dog and you're walking the dog and you just got that five minute snippet to read, you know, OneNote follows you wherever you have your account, if you got the internet. Um, and that's why I've got, got it here. You know, and I cover some really good stuff, OWASP, Sonar Cube, and all this stuff, guys. You got to gem up on. Anyway, so good luck with your exam. Is F500 simple? Six weeks. No excuses, really. Got four kids, demanding wife. I'm in lockdown. I wake up at 4:30 in the morning, do my workout, then hit hit the books. You know, that's what I'm making sacrifice for, so that I make sure that I'm up to a level. It's easy for me to get get another um, job because I'm a contractor and I need to be able to be up to speed with a lot of things. And that's about it. If you want any hints, tips, or anything like that, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe, man, because I want to grow this channel and help people like yourself pass. If you have anything else that you want to see next, let me know. Oh, what am I doing next? I'm doing probably, what would I do? I'll do A's. No, no, no. I'm going to do Terraform Associate. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then what else would I be doing? Probably, I want to do the associate for Terraform because I just want to break from the Microsoft stuff. And then I'll go back to probably doing either AI 100, or sorry, AI 900, not 100. Um, AI 900, and then I want to get my, the, you know, the architecture stuff, so 303 and 304. Anything else, guys, you just, guys, gals, let me know. Thank you and see you soon. And good luck, good luck with passing your exam.